Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you guys know that Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway for Guilds of Ravnica. If you place an order at FlipsideGaming.com between September 3rd and October 7th using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll be entered to win. We've decided to limit entry as one per person to give everyone a more fair chance. So have fun and good luck. Thank you all for joining me. Today's game is a flashback to my time spent in Montreal. I am playing Erebos, keeping three swamps, Withered Wretch, Nizumi Grave Robber, and Lillian of the Dark Realms. We have Tom playing his Tishana deck, keeping Font of Mythos, Soul of the Harvest, Dictate of Crufix, Temple of the False God, Terramorphic Expanse, and Myriad Landscape. We have Tristan, who's new to the channel, playing his Mizzix deck, keeping Spine Rock Knoll, Island, Is It Boilerwork, Mystical Tutor, Rite of Replication, Treasure Cruise, and Lightning Greaves. And last but not least, PM is playing Tygum, Sidisi's Hand, keeping a Swamp, an Island, Drowned Catacomb, Preordain, Agony Warp, Demir Doppelganger, and Butcher of Malakir. PM wins the die roll and starts us off. PM plays an island, and he casts Preordain. He bottoms both cards, and draws before passing to Tom. Tom plays a tap myriad landscape, passing turn. Tristan plays an island, and he casts Mystical Tutor, target acquired. He puts Beacon of Tomorrow on top, and passes to me. I play a swamp, and I pass my turn. PM plays a drowned catacomb, and he passes. Tom plays a terramorphic expanse, cracking it for a forest, and passes. Tristan plays a tapped Spine Rock Knoll, and he hides away a card. I play a Swamp for my turn, and I cast Withered Wretch. At the end of my turn, though, PM casts Agony Warp to take care of the Wretch. PM plays a Swamp, and he casts Demir Doppelganger. Tom seems to be struggling to find lands that produce colors, and he plays a Temple of the False God before passing turn. Tristan pays two mana in his main phase for Lightning Greaves, and he then plays an Is It Boilerworks, bouncing his island back to his hand. I play a Swamp, and I cast Nazuvi Grave Robber, passing turn. PM plays a Winding Canyon as his land for turn, and he casts Bitter Blossom, followed by Swiftfoot Boots. Tom draws for turn, but has to discard, and then passes to Tristan. Tristan replays his island for his land for turn, and taps out to cast Mizzix, gearing her up with his Lightning Greaves upon her entering. He then passes to me. I play a Swamp for my turn, and I cast Lillian of the Dark Realms. I uptick my walker to go and find a swamp, putting it to my hand. PM loses one in his upkeep to Bitter Blossom, gaining a flying fairy rogue token. He then plays a swamp, and he casts Razaketh's Rite to go and tutor for a card to his hand. Tom draws and plays a tapped Calney Garden, gaining a 0-1 plant token as it enters. Tristan casts Frantic Search in his main phase, gaining his first experience counter and drawing two, then discarding two. He also gets to untap three lands, and he plays an Evolving Wilds before passing to me. I play a Blighted Fen as my land for turn, and I uptick Liliana to find a Swamp. While I'm searching, Tristan sacrifices his Wild to go and find an Island, and once we both have our lands, we pass turn. PM loses another life on his upkeep, gaining a Fairy token, and he moves to combat. He swings the Fairy from his turn before at Tristan for one. In his second main phase, PM puts the boots onto his Doppelganger and passes turn. Tom draws for turn, and he casts a Soul Ring. He taps the ring to crack the myriad landscape, going to find two islands. Tom is then able to use his Temple of the False God, and he casts Kadama's Reach, but Tristan casts Insidious Will, choosing the mode that lets him copy the spell, and he gets his own copy of Kadama's Reach. He also gains another experience counter, and Tom finds a forest for the field and an island to his hand, which he plays, while Tristan does the same, minus the forest part. Tristan plays Reliquary Tower as his land for turn, and he casts Treasure Cruise, delving away most of his graveyard. With the spell in the stack, though, PM flashes in Notion Thief, which means he gets to draw three, while Tristan only gains another experience counter. Tristan then moves to cast Beacon of Tomorrow, gaining an extra turn and his fourth experience counter. On Tristan's extra turn, he plays a Mountain and casts Is It Signet, and then passes to me. I play a Swamp for my turn, and I cast Erebos. I then uptick Liliana once more to find a Swamp, and I pass. PM loses one and gains a fairy token on his upkeep. He casts a key to the city in his main phase, which he taps to discard a card and gives his Notion Thief unblockable. PM then activates his doppelganger to become a copy of the Breaker of Armies he'd just discarded, but with the ability on the stack, I activate my Nizumi Grave Robber, which exiles the creature in question. 
In retaliation, as one would expect, PM moves to his combat step and he swings his Notion Thief and two fairies at Liliana, dropping her to one. Tom casts his Endicar Resurgent in his main phase and suddenly his mana issues vanish. He then casts a Font of Mythos and takes two life loss to have his breeding pool come into play untapped. Tom then taps the rest of his mana to cast Dictate of Crufix, and I'm suddenly afraid of how many cards PM will be drawing, but Tom assures me it'll be fine. Tristan draws her turn while PM draws three. Tristan has nothing to play, and he passes. I draw for turn, and PM draws three cards. I play a Swamp, and I uptick Liliana to find another Swamp for my hand. I then cast Stratoscythe in my main phase, exiling a Swamp from my library, and I pass turn. PM draws four cards for his turn, and he plays a Swamp in his main phase. He casts an Essence Extraction, targeting my Nizumi Grave Robber, dealing three to the rat. PM then discards a card to key to the city, giving his doppelganger unblockable, and we see Nizal hit the bin. PM then activates his doppelganger to have it become a copy of Nizal, and he moves to combat. He swings the two fairies at Liliana to take her out, with the third one dealing one to me, and the Nizal doppelganger goes to Tristan for seven. With nothing else, he passes turn. Tom draws while PM continues to draw three on everyone else's turn. Tom then casts Tishana, which has PM drawing two cards from Tishana's ability. Tom apparently is the kind of guy who likes to watch the world burn, because that's the only explanation I have for why he then casts Thought Reflection and passes to Tristan. Tristan draws for turn, while PM draws three. Tristan also has nothing to do again, and he passes turn. I draw, and PM draws, while I play a Swamp in my main phase. I then cast Myojin of Night's Reach, and I pass my turn. PM loses one on his upkeep to Bitter Blossom, and he draws four cards for turn. He plays an island, and he moves to combat. Before declaring attacks though, Tristan casts Turnabout, tapping all of PM's creatures. In his second main phase, PM casts Tygum, Sidisi's hand, and moves to his end step. I respond at the end of his turn by removing the divinity counter from the Myojin, and PM exiles his doppelganger until end of turn by discarding three cards to Nizal's ability. All of my opponents then discard their hand, and we move to Tom's turn. Tom draws for turn, while PM draws 6 because of the Thought Reflection. Tom then passes. Tristan draws for turn, and PM draws 3 cards. Tristan then passes to me. I draw for turn, and PM draws 3 more, and we realize Tishana should have been dead from earlier when Tom had no cards in hand. I gear up my Myojin before moving to combat, and I swing it at PM, and we count up my swamps. PM decides to block with his doppelganger, and I pass, but at the end of my turn, PM discards a card to his key to give Tygum unblockable, and he then casts Thought Scour, milling himself for two, and drawing a card. PM loses one to his Bitter Blossom trigger, and doesn't draw any cards because of Tygum, but rather picks one because of the ability. His hand is basically back to where it was before I removed the Divinity Counter from the Myojin, and he plays a Swamp for his land for turn. He then casts a Brawl's Expertise, bouncing the Font of Mythos, the Swiftfoot Boots, and my Myojin back to hand. He gets to cast Vizier of Many Faces for free, and has it come as a copy of Mizik. He moves to equip the Vizier slash Mizik with the Boots, but I remove the clone from the equation with a go for the throat. He then decides to move the Boots to Tygum, and moving to combat, hits me with the Notion Thief and five Fairy Tokens. Moving to his end step, he discards down to seven at the end of turn. Tom draws, and PM draws three cards, and Tom announces that he's going to be trying to force PM to draw his library. Tom then casts a Sturmgeist, which has him, or should I say PM, draw two from the Resurgent trigger. Tom then moves to cast Tishana, but with the commander on the stack, PM activates Tygum, exiling a card from his graveyard to give his Notion Thief minus one minus one. Tishana then resolves, and Tom draws two from the Resurgent trigger, and then six from Tishana entering. Tom then casts a Horizon Chimera, drawing two before it enters. Tom then casts a Coiling Oracle, drawing two and revealing Urban Evolution from the Oracle trigger. Tristan draws for his turn and casts Seizing Song in his main phase for only one red, gaining five red. He then taps out completely to cast an Epic Experiment where X is 15, yikes. He gains another experience counter and reveals the potential hits he found. He resolves Brainstorm first, drawing three and putting two back on top of his library. He then announces the targets for Spelltwine, picking his Seething Song again, and PMs take through time, and he picks Turnabout with his Mizzix's Mastery. He resolves the Mastery first, untapping his lands with Turnabout. He then resolves Spelltwine, gaining another experience counter, and casts Seething Song, gaining 5 more red, 
and then the dig through time, which nets him another experience counter, and he picks two cards from the top seven. He then resolves his Firemind's Foresight and goes to grab Cyclonic Rift, Steady Progress, and High Tide. Tristan casts High Tide, tapping an island for two blue, one of which is used to cast Steady Progress, drawing him a card, and proliferating his experience counters. He then casts Comet Storm where X is 8, dealing 8 to Tom. Tristan then pays 1 red, activating his Spine Rock Knoll, and gets to cast Temporal Fissure for free. With his storm count at 13, Tristan gets to return a lot of our permanents, and things are looking grim. He then moves to cast Pass in Flames. At this point, he's able to recast most of his graveyard, and the table, realizing that we'll either die from a comet storm, or have no permanents because of Temporal Fissure, decide to scoop it up and move to another game. Game review time. So, we were between a rock and a hard place, and by we, I mean myself and Tom. Unfortunately, with the amount of cards PM was drawing, it was incredibly likely that he'd have drawn into a win condition or two by that point, and I really didn't want him to have that. Which is more or less why I popped the Myogen, but unfortunately, once that resolved, PM let me know that his deck was reanimator based, so that kinda backfired a little bit. Tom's decks are always pretty interesting, and I love the fact that he was trying to make PM lose by drawing him out of his library. It was a bold strategy, and I think he was pretty close to getting there, had he been able to ramp a little bit more and draw something like Blue Sun Zenith. Mizzix is the kind of deck that you know it's going to happen should you basically leave it alone, and unfortunately most of us spent our resources dealing with PM. As a result, this was the foundation for what allowed Tristan to win, but that kind of deck is very fragile to any kind of disruption, so that's probably why he waited until PM and Tom were tapped out. I would say that he went off at the right time, because had it gone around the table once more, he probably would have been focused into oblivion. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.